Hey everyone, Aaron here. This is another surprise attack review, and today we're going to be looking at the Asterix War. Now, I'm going to tell you guys in advance that I'm going to mention Sword Art a line a lot in this review, and it's unavoidable. Um, the Asterix War embodies what Sword Art Online reminds me of in many ways, both good and bad, but I want to say particularly more so bad than good. Now, is the Asterix War bad? It's not, it's not a bad show, but I'm going to explain why, so let me first give you guys a synopsis of it. So the Asterix War takes place in a fictional kind of uh, century where people are able to harness powers from some unknown source where they're actually able to use different kind of waveforms and different kind of powers like they have some people have regeneration, some people have fire, some people have super speed, etc, etc. And only certain people can harness that power. Now, the Asterix City, which is actually why the show is called the Asterix War, is an artificial city that's built built to develop and kind of house all the students that are going to learn how to use these powers. So there's like several different schools, and our main character Ayato is going to a particular school where he learns that he might have things to do there because his sister, quote unquote, has disappeared per se in this exact school that he's going to. Now, right away, that kind of sounds cliche because it is very cliche. <laughs> you know, it's not that it's bad per se. It's not, you know, that's not going to kill the whole story because of that. But it is right away kind of the cliche plot line of, oh, I'm looking for my sister who disappeared. And, you know, she was apparently really popular, really well known to be really strong. And then all of a sudden vanished off the face of the earth. Now, Ayato there right away runs into the typical harem trope of where he runs to a girl he sees her undressing, quote unquote, gets uh, slapped in the face. This girl, said girl he meets is Julius, who he then will become her partner later on in the Asterix Wars, which are these giant fights. Actually, they're called fiestas, I think they're called, which not the not to be the confused with the fiestas, like the Spanish definition, but fiestas in the sense that it's just giant parade-like battles where they're actually shown on televised screens of all these fights that people have. And the students in particular from different schools have to fight each other using their weapons called Luxes. Or in his case, he uses an actual weapon called the Seraph Vesta, which is also linked to his um, sister. Now, you know, it might sound like Asterix War is kind of boring when I, put, when I actually talk about it. And it is, the actual concepts of the Asterix War are very boring. That's, that's the biggest thing about it, is actually talking about it and trying to find the concepts of it here and there is very meticulous. Like... Nothing about the Asterix War stands out. You know, you have your typical harem tropes where you have the lowly girl, you have the girl who looks very young but also has a huge chest, you have the girl who's very flirtatious, you have the girl who's a tsundere character. They're in the show and they're the front the front runners of the show. And that's a problem because it's where then I go back to my original statement of, being, of mentioning sword art so much in this is that similar to sword art, I think the Asterix War does not know what it wants to be. And, you know, as I've talked about this many times in other reviews, one of the biggest issues with any TV show or anime or movie or whatever you want is the concept of where does it want to be? What is it? Does it want to be a harem? Does it want to be a slice of life? Does it want to be action, drama, etc.? And to many degrees, you have to know what a show is going to be to enjoy it. The Asterix Ward deviates between harem, action, drama comedy it doesn't know when to pull back the reins and kind of just focus on one or the or the other you know some episodes are devoted solely to action some are devoted solely to harem some are devoted and it's the same issue with sword art where sword art the first several episodes are the best because they're they seem to know what they want to do you know they convey the world of them being stuck in a game for example I'm not you know this is not the same concept but they they know what they want to do with the first few episodes but after that, it starts losing stability when it kind of goes, you know, fast forwarding here or there and avoiding certain concepts and explaining certain details. Very similar to Asterix Wars like that a lot, where the first five episodes of it out of the 12 episodes that the show is focus on Ayato kind of figuring out who he is and how strong he is because he has something where essentially his sister put a limiter on him. So he can't use his full strength and his full powers for more than five minutes at a time. And Julius is his partner, and, you know, it's the five, first five episodes are kind of like them getting cohesion together, you know, tr trying to actually become two people that are actually going to be partners in the show, if, I, if that makes any sense. 
the problem was is after the fifth episode, it then starts going where it goes, do we want to be action or do we want to be harem? Where he starts meeting the other girls more so. You know, he, he's met a few of them in the first few episodes, but they're not prominent. They don't, they don't really have that much of a role besides kind of just occasional glimpses of comedy here and there. But then the next, after six to like 12 episodes, it's just constantly with the harem and constantly with the action being back and forth. You know, some episodes are going to be like, oh, this harem elements, fan service here and there. Some episodes would just be pure action and pure just combat. And that is one of the saving graces of the Asterix Wars. The combat and the music really are the best parts of the show. I mean, Ayato is kick-ass. One thing I like about him is that even though he embodies what a character can be like when it comes to being overpowered, that limiter really does kind of hinder him. And it's a good way of making a character who should be overpowered by every definition have an issue where he cannot use his full power. Case in point, in the very uh, last episode, I think it was like, no, not the last episode, excuse me, the, the very last part of the five episodes that I was talking about, he gets into a giant fight and has an issue right away where he can't stay he can't stay around after five minutes he's just done he's dead and it's it's just all of his energy's dried out he, he can't move you know he's screaming in pain and writhing in pain it sets for a good concept right away the problem is though is that once again the asterix war falls falls flat when it tries to make sure that his power is in check by that there is another episode later on that i'm not gonna spoil but you know it's seemingly like even though he has the limiter on him the the five minutes he still somehow goes along and fights way past that with no issue. And that was my biggest, biggest problem is like the Asterix War does not know what it wants to be. Does it want to be action? Does it want to be serious, comedy, drama, romance, harem? It doesn't know. It really doesn't. And all the issues with that even more so are imbued into the fact that each one of the categories it tries to embody is lackluster. You have the typical harem stuff. You have the typical action stuff. You have the typical romance elements and, and character designs no one in this show looks anything but generic i mean these are characters you've seen in every anime w you can name and that's a problem you have again with the whole loli and you know the whole sundere these are characters you look i mean look at the design of julius who's on the far right and then ayato they don't really per se look unique they look like everyday anime characters and i don't want to you know beat the crap out of it for the fact that it looks like that because there's a lot of anime that's very generic and in, in, in character designs but even their character concepts and their character progressions and plots are just that generic that's why honestly let's look at again let's look at the positives we have a good good action sequence where the action in this show is awesome i'll tell you right now the music is phenomenal i, I actually love the the ending closing the ending and closing of the show because and I say that differently because the way every time the show ends and then goes into the closing actually is pretty cool I like the kind of tone music they do I, I always like when anime does that where it leads into almost like similar to Black Lagoon where if you guys remember Black Lagoon if, if any of you've seen it the fact of when something was just about to end like an episode in particular it would play this kind of little tune and then it would go right into the closing embodying into that tune, which is really cool. I, I love when anime does that, and it does that in Asterix War very well. The opening's very good, too. And a lot of the combat music and a lot of the um, just regular standstill music is very, very nice. I really, The Asterix War is a CD I would actually buy because it just has some really good beats to it. Voice acting-wise, Japanese-wise, it's not too bad. It's not anything... You, I mean, a lot of these characters you've probably heard in a million other things. But again, everything else is what's at fault with the Asterix War. You know, the story is not that great. The character concepts are very generic, and the kind of plot lines they have are generic. And the season ends on a very big cliffhanger. I mean, I know there's a season two coming out in the spring of 2016, so it's not going to be that far away. But for now, if you watch the whole series, you're going to get into this huge, huge cliffhanger. So, you know, expect that. But overall, you know, if I had to review the Asterix War A through F, I'd have to give it a C. You know, it's not a bad show. I know it may sound like I bashed it here and there, but... Overall, because just because a show is generic or because it has you know typical tropes doesn't mean it could be bad. It ha again, it has some great action, and luckily the action is really what saved the show. I mean, there every episode has a sprinkling of action here and there, and even the episodes that don't have a little bit of hint towards it. But you know, I was really, I was really, I was going to give the show originally a C minus. I was very close to that, but 
again, it, it's it's a show that you watch once, you enjoy it, and then when the second season comes out, you watch that and enjoy it. But it, you never you never like talk about this ever again. It's not going to be a show that's going to be the next Sword Art or the next Attack on Titan or anything even close to those kind of realms. It's just going to be one of those. I, I want to say because this came out last year, or you no, know, what it came out in twelve. Well, it did came out last year because now we're in twenty sixteen. Wow, that's weird. Um, you know, it's going to be one of those twenty fifteen animes that you watched and you just enjoy. That's it, done. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, until I pass across again in the next review, have a good one, everyone. Bye.